Hello everybody. Today we shall start the lect lecture number 3 and let me again clarify that this particular course we have taken for reinforced concrete road bridges and that is a very a one part of that bridge engineering. Why we have taken this particular one as I have told earlier that this particular course reinforced concrete bridges particularly solid slab and RCC T beam those are very common. So, we have taken a one way you can say that which is popular at the same time we can say which is simple, simple in a sense that we know reinforced concrete design. So, how we can apply to bridges? Coming to this particular one here, another objective of this course that at least we should be able to design a bridge either a solid slab or a RCC T beam bridge. Considering that aspect, there are many more things are there which you will find out in different books, but we are mainly interested from the point of view design. Coming to this particular one here, so this is our lecture 3 that we are taking a half an hour module that way you can say and we are introducing here the general features of design and vehicle loading. That is our objective here, the general features of design and vehicle loading these are important. Last class we have shown you different kind of vehicles we have shown you. The thing is that how shall we make it standardized, which particular load shall we use for our design. Considering that aspect, as I have told you this particular figure I have shown you many times and this one we are considering the deck. So, we require carriageway, footpath and crash barrier. The thing is that this one that means vehicles the middle part the carriageway part you can consider this. Then we are having footpath we have considered footpath in both sides and you are having crash barrier in both sides. We can have railing also that we shall come different time that we shall come. So, our objective is that what would be the first thing that one as you know this is the direction of vehicle. So, vehicle is moving in this particular direction. So, whenever it is moving in this particular direction then and that is actually we call it span of the bridge. Now, whenever we are considering the span of the bridge let us just make it very clear. In that case whatever we can consider the first thing we are having say span of the bridge. If you consider here again let me tell you we are considering here simply supported beams. So, this is our simply supported beam. simply supported beam. As you can see that I have given this point at the end that means and if you see that any book whenever so far you have solved this problem any analysis problem in structural analysis whatever it is there you consider this one that L we consider that L, but in a physical system what we really require, we require something more. That means, if this is the one, the deck, we are talking here mainly say with the solid slab we are talking, here we shall have bearing. So, this is bearing. this one another one. 
So, obviously, this bearing will have certain kind of dimension. So, if you compare this first figure and if you compare this figure, this is the actual reality. So, we can get obviously, it is wise to make the dimension from the center line of the bearing to the center line of the other side from the left side to this one. So, that means, we can consider this one as L or effective span whatever we shall calculate that our bending moment shear force we shall compute on the basis of that. So, we have another one. this is another length that is the actual one you have to construct. So, this dimension that one we can consider that one say you can say the total span I can consider. So, our bending moment shear force our objective here to find out a physical dimension of this deck where all of them in this figure if you see all of them will come into picture. That means, this one that it will be carried by this deck your footpath both sides I have given this color different color to distinguish because otherwise it will come the same. The thing is that footpath also made of concrete or maybe different grade then this crash barrier also another grade of concrete like that. So, that means, um, we shall come forward uh, later on that where we shall another important aspect that we have to consider that is what will be the grade of concrete, what is the grade of steel. Anyway, first we are coming to our physical dimension. So, this dimension as you know the span is dependent that means, span we can understand from the how much we have to actually negotiate, how much we have to overcome the situation that what curve one that barrier that barrier that obstacle that how much we have to overcome and that one we call it the span. So, that is the first parameter that means, we can say if it is a canal, if it is a river I can say that this much I have to move forward. So, that way we can consider that one as a span and as you can see that we are having now two different spans. One is we are considering that effective span we can consider and we can call it another one we can consider the total span the total span of the bridge total length of the bridge that is one aspect. So, length wise if we consider this one that is your say x axis I can say that means, this particular one I can consider that I am moving along the x axis and this is your x axis it is customary to write down this one as y vertical generally we write down as y. So, if you take a cross section a a if you take a cross section then I shall find out this cross section the deck part where we are having this one say your y x is the one that normal to the page and then we are having this one here say z. So, this is your direction that means, your cross section will be in y z plane longitudinal will be in your say x y plane. So, and the plan whatever we are getting that one will be in z x plane. So, coming to this one here if we see this figure again let us come back to this figure again that where we are showing this particular on the screen this figure if you come back here. So, that means, this dimension whenever we are talking we are having two spans effective span and total span from the construction point view obviously, you have to get the total span because that is the actual quantity actual dimension you have to consider for um, analysis point of view it will come the effective span. And now, the question is that one what will be the this length that means, your in the z axis. So, this is your x axis and this is your z axis. So, how much will be your that z axis that particular one you have to why is the depth that one will come later on that one will come later on I mean to say considering the bending moment shear force and different other aspects also 
that we shall consider later on. So, this is the one we would like to find out where from we shall get the information. Question is that where from we shall get the information. The information we shall get it from this Indian Roads Congress New Delhi they publish this different code like say Indian standard code we are having this IRC. Similarly, you are having BIS and generally you are having Euro code also and different other countries also are having different codes. Coming to this particular one here, so standard specifications and code of practice for road bridges. This is our focus and then in section 1 and section 2, IRC 5 that is section 1, general features of design, IRC 6 section 2 that is actually loads and stresses. So, mainly we shall consider that vehicle load that we shall discuss today that particular one. Now, our as per our objective for this particular course, we shall only consider these two solid slab bridge and RCC T beam because I personally feel that if we can understand this one, other one will be easier to understand. So, solid slab bridge and RCC T beam. Now, coming to this one here the single lane, double lane, triple lane. So, this is the one that we have to consider single lane, double lane and triple lane. Let me clarify this one just a general idea say for example, how shall we decide that? We can decide this one here, let us consider that you are having vehicle on the roads, you are having vehicles on the road obviously that you should have another vehicle, you should have another vehicle like this it is moving. There is a you on road you will find out there is a gap, but what we feel that I shall give something say 20 meter that means I shall get this one 20 meter that I shall give that means between the two vehicles I shall give. Let us assume roughly say 5 meter. So, that means this one is coming so 25 meter that means this one we are having 25 meter. Let us say the vehicles are moving at 60 kilometer per hour. That means, in a 60,000 meter in a 60,000 meter this is for that means 1 hour that means, I am considering a particular one. So, all the vehicles will move to move from this particular vehicle and the last vehicle if it moves. So, it will take 1 hour because I am assuming all of them moving at 60 kilometer per hour. So, that means, here if we consider 60,000 divided by 25 that means, it will come 2400 this is the one number of vehicles. You will find out this information in IRC relevant code generally that is done by the transportation engineering group, but you can immediately you can see that it is coming 2400 that number of vehicles. It can be 3000, 3500 like that we can consider that. So, this is a very very comfortable one if you go little more then obviously, it will be crowded like that. Now, this is a very very decision factor say for example, I am assuming that I shall give for each lane I shall give 3000 vehicles in a hour if I consider that if I stand in one place and if we just keep on counting then I shall say that I should not get more than 3000 vehicles is passing. If it goes more then that means, it is becoming crowded. On the basis of that we shall decide that at a particular point we shall decide that how many vehicles are coming and on the basis of that we shall decide that number of lanes. So, number of lanes means single lane, 
double lane that means two vehicles can move triple lane like that it can go. So, this is the one we consider that one we have to decide that one how shall we consider whether single lane double lane or triple lane. If you see that in a remote village uh, road that we do not have that much of vehicles. So, what we can do we can go to single lane only and if we go to single lane then means a very uh, rare situation it may come that one another vehicle has come. So, you have to give that um, side so that other can move. So, this is the one clause 112 of IRC 5 that is the one we consider again. So, as I have told you earlier this is the one the deck which is actually taking care of all the load vehicles then pedestrian that footpath and also your say um, crash barrier like that you are considering. So, here for high level bridges constructed for the use of road traffic only the width of carriageway shall not be less than 4.25 meter for a single lane bridge and 7.5 meter for a two lane bridge and shall be increased by 3.5 meter for every additional lane of traffic for a multiple lane bridge. So, that means here if we really consider that so we are having three numbers 4.25 meter 7.5 meter and you are having 3.5 meter. So, this one very specific single lane when it is only single lane. So, obviously, it is wise to give little more because 3.5 may be sufficient for one lane, but whenever we are giving only one lane. So, obviously, I have to give little more this is for double lane and this is for additional lanes. So, we can consider this one here. So, on the basis of that we can calculate that how much will be your that length of the width of the bridge. So, we can decide on the basis of that we can decide on the width of the bridge and then we can find out. So, that means, the carriageway we shall decide on the basis of that the carriageway of the bridge we shall decide on. The. Now, additional dimensions for footpath whether you are giving you know, one footpath in one side whether you are giving in both sides because fund is another important aspect and on the basis of that we decide that whether we shall go for um, whether we shall go for that we are say footpath in both sides whether we shall though it is not wise to give say railing only so, um, we give but the thing is it is better to give crash barrier so that the vehicle will never go out of the bridge. So, that way um, we consider there. Road bridges will provide for either one lane, two lanes, or multiple of two lanes. This is very, very important here. Please note this word multiple of two lanes. The thing is that generally we do not give whenever the vehicles are um, we are considering vehicles, um, then whenever we are considering vehicles that moving in opposite direction, then obviously that it should be. If it is a single lane that we know that single lane means we have to wait we have to give pass to other one if somebody comes on the other side. Double lane means I do not have any problem that I shall use one my left lane and the other side of the lane will be used the which is coming from the opposite side. Now, if we go for three lanes then you are having one ambiguity of one lane. One lane left lane you can consider that lane for the person who is going upward direction you can say the one in the right hand side the furthest right hand side you can consider that one the person who is coming that one you can say that uh, you can say like this that this is the vehicle and this is the one. So, this one going up this one coming down now this portion the vehicle who will use it. So, that is why it is told that you use that not multiple of two lanes. So, it should be multiple if you use say odd number of lanes three lanes then it should be one direction only and you will find out in particular in a highway the three lane bridges are constructed.
three lane bridge constructed, but that is for one directional traffic unidirectional it is never used for both. So, that is why you will find out highways that you will find out three lane bridges you will find out for up or up up as well as for down the two three lane bridges you will find out particularly in the highways you will find out and that is the one and that is for one direction. So, that means one exclusively for the up, up direction another one exclusively for the down direction that way you can consider that. three lane bridges with two directional traffic shall not be considered that is the one you will find out. The carriageway on each side of the bus shall provide at least two lanes of traffic width thereof shall individually comply with the minimum requirements stipulated above the width of central verge median when provided shall not be less than 1.2 meters. So, if we have something say medial portion, so it should not be less than 1.2 meter. Cross section of two lane and multi lane bridges shall satisfy the following that means, for all minor bridges of total length up to 60 meter as I have told you that different categories of that one based on the span we have discussed out of that we have discussed that one. So, 60 meter you can consider that one as a minor bridge with between the outermost faces of the bridge shall be equal to the full roadway width of the approaches subject to a minimum of 10, met 10 meter for hill roads other distros and 12 meter for other cases. So, this is your that guideline. So, as you can see that means, our objective here whenever you are deciding that width, the width will be such the roads width should not be more than the bridge width. If it happens then obviously, there will be a congestion of traffic um, during movement. So, that is why that always you should have the neck should not be actually the less than the body that is the one we should not have. For two lane bridges having total length more than 60 meters that is we call it actually your say um, major bridge you can say the width of the bridge shall provide for 7.5 meter carriageway plus a minimum of 1.5 meter width wide footpath on either side wherever required. So, you have to give minimum say at least say 1.5 meter footpath sometimes they restrict, but that is not the uh, right choice. So, the thing is that here as I have told you many times that bridge actually one important aspect the road part you can easily expand it, but whereas the bridge part once it is done you will not be it is very difficult until unless you expand it. So, there is a certain kind of expansion actually possible that one nowadays uh, many um, that state highways or national highways they are doing that particular one. So, that is why it is always wise to go for certain kind of dimension that particular one in this case I have told you 1.5 meter wide footpath sometimes they make it say 0 0.75 or 1 meter that is not uh, a wise decision. For two lane bridges having total length more than 60 meter in urban situations the overall width between the outermost faces of the bridge shall be equal to the full roadway width of the approaches. So, whatever you are having that full roadway width of the approaches. Now, the thing is that whenever you are talking set full roadway width in that case what happen actually that 7.5 meter that is for the double lane and that is very very common and uh, then you can go for your say 11 meter. Uh, that way uh, we can consider for the three lane generally the, uh, but that one again should be actually unidirectional that particular one we should consider here. So, coming to this particular one here so that full roadway whatever you are talking say 7.5 meter or whatever one you are considering that one that should be uh, met. For multi lane bridges in both urban and northern urban situations, the overall width between the outermost faces of the bridge shall be the same as the full roadway width of the approaches. Wherever footpaths are provided, their width shall not be less than 1.5 meter. The width of the median in the bridge portion shall be kept same as that in the approaches. So, that particular one we should keep it in our mind. 
for bridges on expressways the provisions of that are uh, shall be satisfied the carriageway width shall not be less than the width of the carriageway in the approaches plus hard shoulders. So, these are the guidelines whatever given in IRC 5. So, this is most important on 4 and that I have given here that particular one here for expressways. So, with respect to the earlier clause that we shall consider. So, the idea is very simple that uh, we can consider this one this is very simple that means you, are, you can consider that one here that uh, your you can consider that road width that we can find out. So, it is very simple 4.25 meter once more let me tell you 7.5 meter and then 3.5 meter that is the guiding factor on the basis of we have to do it and then your width of the approach road that is actually very very important here. Now, coming to this one here just to inform this is the one we call it actually your say crash barrier. Crash barrier can have this type of dimension this one I have taken from IRC 5 and then we are having the different this is a very very standard dimension that occur. once it you can do it you can use it to, for all your project if you want to do it. So, these are the things you can go into and this is your railing part here you have considered this one say here that you can take out this one that means the bridge and because the, there is a possibility the earlier case the vehicles will come vehicles will um, make come to the footpath, but in this case that vehicle will never come to the footpath. So, that may pedestrians can go in a comfortable manner without any anxiety. So, that way you can consider here. This is your uh, single head this is the double head of vertical post double head double side that means both sides that is possible that means this is in one side this is also one side and this one whenever you are using the both sides that particular one vehicles are moving that uh, you can consider that. So, coming to this one here before that uh, I thought I shall tell you this um, what is called just a minute. So, this particular one here. So, now we have got this information that I know the span that how much we have to negotiate, how much we have to overcome, how much obstacle we have to move on the basis of the span is decided. The next one we are getting this one here say that your this portion footpath whether this is given or not then crash barrier then you are having railing on the basis of that the deck width will be decided and then we can find out this dimension that we can find out. That means our first part that we can say that we can find out the dimension we, we can got, um, get it. The question is coming here depending on the span the superstructure will be decided and as I have told you that one that here we are considering a simple one that RCC solid slab the one I am showing and second one we shall consider RCC T beam because that you can find out if we go little more then we require that the depth is coming quite high and that one is not at all acceptable from the economic point of view that we can consider. So, coming to this particular one here this is the one general considerations um, we are doing here. The second part uh, we shall consider that one obviously it is coming that one here just uh, quickly let me um, come back there that I can tell you. So, for this particular case we have considered only say here I have given the general features of design for IRC 5 that mainly we have considered the second part we shall consider that on you say loads and stresses and that we, we shall consider in the second part of, of our that today's topic. And uh, Indian Road Congress having so many codes and we shall also consider here that other codes uh, you, you I shall show you that other codes particularly say Euro code and most of the cases you will find out that uh, um, BIS that Bureau of Indian Standard or say your um, that IRC that is mainly followed that one say they have followed that Euro code and you will find out that reference. Our objective here that uh, step by step we are moving towards the design that not only from the only you know, from the planning stage that means how to decide that what type of span what type of bridge we shall decide that is the first part 
and on the basis of that we require the top portion. So far I have given you the plan of the bridge that means if you look from the top of the bridge I shall get the span of the bridge and width of the bridge. So far I have not told you what will be the depth of the bridge that one will come into picture when we know the loading or what type of loading are coming different kinds of loading will come into picture mainly we shall consider the self weight of the um, bridge and the other one we shall consider um, that one that you would say that vehicle loading that we shall consider. So, in the next one we shall consider that loads and stresses particularly you would say vehicle loading because there are so many vehicles are going the question is that what will be the load due to the vehicle that is one important part that we have to consider. So, that everybody all designers will follow that one and that is obviously very very important here. Say for example, just to give you idea from Indian standard code that IS 875 whenever we talk say residential building then obviously, we consider say for example, 200 kg per square meter or 250 kg per meter may be 300 kg per square meter depending on the situation if it is a balcony then it is 400 kg per square meter or 4 kilo Newton per square meter if it is a staircase 4 kilo Newton per square meter we say that one that balcony is crowded let us say you are having a balcony if you are um, then balcony then uh, it is in the road side there is a possibility that uh, occasionally it may happen that people are uh, all crowded on the balcony to see what is going on the road there is a procession there is something going on. So, that way they can understand. So, that way there one is that normal loading another one we call it say um, crowded. So, for balcony then we can have say balcony 4 kilo Newton per square meter then similarly 5 kilo Newton per square meter. Similarly, in the footpath also we should have that how much load we shall consider for the footpath, how much load we shall consider for the um, your vehicles. So, that is the one and which we shall get it from this code that IRC 6 section 2 loads and stresses by Indian Road Congress New Delhi again. So, we have only taken this one that we are having bearing code then we are having concrete code like that we are having different codes, but we shall introduce the codes which are required for our this particular course. Okay, with this uh, let me conclude this particular one then we shall go to the next one that is loads and stresses. Thank you very much.